Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MonoBlueTron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. Today we're taking a look at an archetype that truly freaks the heck out of me. You've heard of Quick Effect Destruction, and you've heard of Quick Effect Vanishing, but are you prepared for Quick Effect Tributing? We're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite and most consistent brews with Layer of Darkness and Diabolos, Darkness Infernoid. So here's the list. Now I'm sure there's probably a lot here that you're familiar with, but there's also probably a bit you're confused about. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Lair of Darkness and its associated cards are a series of dark monsters from the new structure deck that all banish from or require tribute summoning. Their flagship spell, Lair of Darkness, is an absolutely catastrophically good card. It turns all monsters on the field dark, then allows you to tribute opponent's monsters for the cost of your own effects that require a tribute. The monster lineup, Lilith, Diabolos, and Arima, all have tribute for cost effects that are good without the field spell and bonkers with it. What makes Lilith particularly frightening is that her effect is a quick effect, giving her access to removal that dodges almost all protection and pluses you at quick speed. This deck is an attempt to capitalize on the power of that interaction and fill the deck with similar monsters. Infernoid is a shell that is constantly in search of a good home, and this is likely the best one yet. With access to the field spell, you can use the small Infernoid's graveyard banish effects to tribute opponents' monsters on their own turn, finally making Sajet useful. Add that to Lilith's search effect and its ability to find any normal trap like, oh, I don't know, Void Feast? And these two seem like a bit of a match made in heaven. A hyper-consistent Void Feast search mechanism that enables instant speed removal and enormous enormous dorks to clear the board on your own turn and push for lethal. So with that, let's get into the card by card. And this is 60 cards, so we've got a lot to get through. First, we have the Lair Stuff. Three copies of Darkest Diabolos, who can special himself from hand or grave if a dark monster is tributed, and can tribute one dark monster to tuck a card from your opponent's hand. Next is Lilith, who can tribute a dark monster as a quick effect to reveal three normal traps and give you one of your opponent's choice. Finally is Arima, who can tribute a dark you control to draw a card, or if it's one with 2,000 or more defense, snag a Diabolos. Oh, also you can discard him, and you can add the field spell to hand. Pretty relevant. Next are the Noids. Two Anonku, two Deviati, one Atondel, two Seismitas, one Sajet, two Petrela, two Hamadic, and three Decatron. Finally, some good stuff in 60 card, two copies of Snow, one Raiden, and one Wolf. For spells, we've got one One for One, one Grass, three Pot of Desires, one Monster Gate, one Reasoning, three Terraforming, one Foolish Burial, three Left Arm Offering to get Grass usually, but occasionally the Field Spell, three Charge of the Light Brigade, three Void Imagination, three Void Vanishment, and three Lair of Darkness. For traps, we have two Full Force virus, one Eradicator Epidemic Virus, please do not unlimit this Konami, and three Void Feast. In the extra, we've got three Ntis for our one Tierra, one Scarlight, one Omega, one Baguska, one Tornado, one Abyss Dweller, one Saruya, one Borolode, one Decode Talker, one Proxy, one Akashic, and one Link Haribo. So with that, let's jump into the games. Okay, well in classic 10 minute testing fashion, our first game is a bit of a blink and you'll miss it against a kind of mediocre deck. Our opponent is playing Dark Lords, a deck that is really hurting for playables, as you can see by the hand destruction they're playing. We've opened quite well and we're going second, which we aim to every game. This deck is adept at OTKs. Our opponent's going to start by activating this copy of hand destruction. I'm happy to get Diabolos and an Infernoid out of my hand. We draw into a Void Vanishment, which is excellent. Our opponent's going to Soul Charge back an Athena and two Fairies. Occasionally Athena OTKs me, but not in this particular instance. We'll take 600 off the Super Bia summon, they'll Athena effect and deal another 600, then use Super Bias to bring back a Hecatrice and make, of all things, Code Talker. That's a naked Code Talker, no prefix necessary. We're going to start by activating Lair of Darkness, then use the effect of Lilith to tribute the Athena. We'll get ourselves a Void Feast set, then use Void Imagination so we can go into a Tierra and blow up literally our opponent's entire board with Ntisses. That is just enough for our opponent to concede on the spot. Our second match is up against an individual from the Discord, evidently inspired by the previous episode of 10 Minute Testing, who has built ABC Ojama. I mean, I don't know if we can compete with such a non-memetic, consistent, and powerful list. Our opponents actually opened pretty well, and if ABC does one thing well, it's build boards, so let's see if we can compete. They'll start by activating this copy of Terraforming to get a copy of Dragon's Ravine to hand. They'll use it sending this copy of Oja Magic from hand to graveyard so they can plus out the ass to get Dragon, Dark Worm, and Grave, and Destrudo from hand onto the field. They'll go ahead and normal summon Ojama Black and Link Spider effect, I didn't even know this had an effect, to go into Saruya. Then afterwards, they'll activate the effect of Union Hanger, then special summon a copy of B Buster Drake attaching an A to it. So next turn, they will have access to the entirety of ABC, and they have an Ojama. Ojama party set. They'll go ahead and fire off that Ojama party as soon as I activate Void Imagination, adding a copy of Oja Magic and plussing once again off of it. That's not a big deal because we can still Void Imagination into a Tierra, then use a couple of Ntisses to blow up our opponent's entire board. We can hit the Saruya, the 
Union Hanger and the Ojama Party at a time when it cannot float into banished Ojamas. Afterwards, we're going to get a copy of Lair of Darkness, Normal Summon a Decatron, then use Decatron's new effect to banish a card on our side of the field, then go into a Deviati. We'll go ahead and attack over this B and pass it back. Lair of Darkness is going to activate but not get any tokens. Our opponent's going to activate Set Rotation, and oh no, that's terrible! We're going to chain out so we can get that A out of their graveyard, preventing them from ABCing potentially, but unfortunately they're playing three copies of each piece, so that's going to be impossible. They'll go ahead and go into a Diamond Direwolf. I guess I will negate that effect since they've targeted Deviati anyway, and then afterwards they'll go ahead and special summon this copy of Dark Worm and go into ABC Dragon Buster. Of course, Diabolos cannot be targeted, so they have to ram into it and then set one and pass. So things are looking pretty good. We have a wealth of Infernoids in the graveyard. We'll actually use Dragon's Ravine to send a Diabolos, then go into Deviati who gets Solemn Struck. Thankfully we have enough for an Anonku, and we can attack for lethal. All right, so it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent is on Trickstar, one of the very few decks we want to go first against. Uh, let's see how this works out. Our opponent's going to start by activating a copy of Terraforming, getting themselves a Trickstar Light Stage, then using the effect of Trickstar Light Stage for a Candina, which they'll summon to get a reincarnation of hand, set one, and pass it back. Now, this looks like a Droll and Lock loop to me, so I'll set as much as I can. Normal Summon Decatron, that gets ashed, which is great news for us, because, of course, we have a Grass set. We'll go ahead and fire that sucker off. Unfortunately, no copies of Snow, not ideal. We'll go ahead and Terraforming into a Lair, and what do you know, here's the reincarnation. Who really needed that Lair? It's so, so good, so important. Important. They'll go ahead and tag out into a copy of Licorice to do a little bit of damage to us. We'll go ahead and special summon a Petrula, destroy that spell card, and ooh, we've accidentally allowed them access to Struggling Battle. Bit of a misplay on my part, but Deviati might be enough to seal the deal. Our opponent's going to start by activating a Terraforming off the top for a copy of Trickstar Light Stage to get another Licorice to hand. They'll activate the effect of Candina. We'll negate it. We can't destroy it because they can tag out for the Licorisica they just added to hand, but negating it is still pretty good. They'll go ahead and use the effect of Reincarnation in Grave to get back a Licorisica and then, oh wait, is this lethal? They've monster reborn our Diabolos for, yep, e exactly lethal. Oh well, that's game one. All right, so game two, and now that I know what's up, I refuse to play against a Trickstar Reincarnation, and we'll go first. Our hand is pretty bad, but we have a copy of Void Vanishment, so provided our opponent doesn't have a hand trap, which they don't, should be rounded out. We'll start by activating the copy of Void Vanishment, discarding this copy of Snow, so on the off chance that we have to use her, we can. We'll set this Void Feast and then flip it in standby so that we can get ourselves two copies of Deck and a Sajet. These decks are going to become, of course, a copy of Anonku and a copy of Deviati, respectively. Our opponent's going to start by normal summoning a Candino, which of course we will negate, provided they don't have a Licorice in hand, should be really good, and they don't. We'll negate this light stage as well, but they have several additional copies. They'll go ahead and fire off one of said additional copies for another Candina and pass it back. We still have a pretty big beater on our side of the board, so I'm not feeling particularly bad. We go into Petrela, and I think, you know, it actually might be worth just attacking instead of destroying their field spell. I mean, they might have a third one in hand. We'll go ahead and get in for almost lethal, 2800 short, but we have several Infernoids who can clear the way. They'll go ahead and target my set card with light stage, then do the same thing after the second light stage, go into a Lily Bell, and a Candina. We'll go ahead and chain the effect of Petrela so that we can banish that Trickstar Reincarnation from Grave, stop any shenanigans from making this Holly Angel bigger than our Sajet, and they'll concede. All right, so that all-important game three, and unfortunately our opponent is going first, and we've drawn into a lot of big dumb dudes. Uh, well, they're going to start by activating a Terraforming to get a copy of Trickstar Light Stage to their hand. They're then going to use the Light Stage to get a Candina, use Candina's effect for a reincarnation, set to, and pass. And I'm thinking, this looks familiar, probably a Droll and Lock combo. Let's play around it. We'll start by normal summoning Lilith, making a Tondel the hard way, and going into the field spell, and, well, there it is, Droll and Lock and reincarnation. We lose one card, but it's not the end of the world. We can get in for a significant chunk of our opponent's life points, and it's actually quite hard for them to deal with a 2800 attack point monster. There's just not that many things that get over it in Trickstar. One thing that does however, is the Eater of Millions they've picked up off the top of their deck. They'll go ahead and use Light Stage to target our set card, and there's Eater of Millions. They'll go ahead and destroy our Tondel in damage step. We'll use Lilith before the attack is declared so that we can, I don't know, have a Void Feast set on the off chance we draw into a Void card, <laughs> potentially. They're going to go into a copy of Licorice and then a copy of Licorice from Grave with the Reincarnation's second effect, dealing a whole heap of damage to us. What do we draw into? But, oh my god, it's actually a Void card, so <laughs> a little sacky, but maybe we can make something work. We're going to have to out this Eater of Millions which is not ideal. We'll go ahead and flip over this Void Feast, go into a Decatron and a Seismitas so we can banish it after the battle phase is over. We're going to do just that, then pass it back to our opponent. Oh, and there's Scapegoat. So that should be all she wrote. I don't think we can possibly beat this. They're going to go ahead and go into the one, the only Firewall Dragon, trying to complete the Lily Bell loop. Of course, we can stop the Lily Bell loop, but we cannot stop Lily Bell just attacking us twice, using her effect, getting a copy of Trickstar Licorice from Graveyard back to the hand, using Licorice's effect, and then using Lily Bell's effect, because of course it was normal summoned to get in for lethal. 
So we're back with the deck. I thought that one was pretty close, and additionally I think Trickstar is probably this deck's worst matchup as it was able to consistently prevent me from getting access to the field spell. I will say I would be concerned for the future if I was all of you. There is almost no way this incredibly strong ability is not going to manifest into some sort of powerful deck. I think this shell is a good argument for the best one, but unfortunately my list is a little bit loose. I think Full Force was pretty embarrassingly bad, Monster Gate and Reasoning have lost a lot of power over the years, and it might finally be time to hang up the Lightsworn Engine for good. I would remove those cards for three copies of Evenly Matched as a better Lilith target, some board wipes, and some hand traps. I like the idea of going second, but we're almost certainly causing more harm than good to ourselves by not playing the things that most easily let us do so. So that's that. I hope you appreciated a foreboding diagnosis of removal spells to come. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and if you have an idea for a deck or archetype you want to see on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday.